Troy Hill. This is Troy Hill Talks, and we're here to you tonight with a review of Fast and Furious 9. Yeah, there's nine of them. The series has been going on for 20 years. It's definitely been a, an amazing ride. Really, really enjoy the first one when they were just actual just thieves hijacking trucks for electronics equipment. But lo and behold, these guys become basically super spies with superhuman strength that never die. First off, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for supporting our channel, subscribing to the channel, liking and comment. We really do like to hear your feedback. Let us know how we're doing and we love interacting with each and every one of you. But to the movie, it opens up with a great race scene that takes place back in 1989 with um, Dom and Jacob's father. He ends up dying in a horrible car accident and all of a sudden fast forward Dom and, you know, his wife and Letty are trying to live this, you know, the, the peaceful life out in the countryside somewhere. And all of a sudden, lo and behold, Roman and Taj come rolling up with this footage. And Mr. Nobody has caught Cypher. And something's going down. I caught Cypher. Yada, yada, yada. Where Cypher all of a sudden looks like Simple Jack now all of a sudden from Tropic Thunder. I thought it was really, really odd a choice of hairstyle. But whatever. <laughs> You know, outside of that, the movie, they have to try and find this um, device called Ares. Then it's revealed all of a sudden, lo and behold, that, you know, Dom has this brother named John Cena! John Cena! Oh my God! Oh my God! Jacob. Which, I mean, it's, it's okay. It's part of the movie, right? You know, people complain about flashback sequences. Well, you kind of have, have flashback sequences to even justify even trying and introduce the character of Jacob because it wouldn't make no sense otherwise, right? So, I mean, I thought overall, if you can take away, just forget about your adult self when you watch this movie. Forget about, you know, things like science and numbers and physics because if you're going to take on, you're going to take those things with you when you watch this movie, you're probably not going to enjoy it because you're going to question every damn thing that happens. To that inner child of yourself when we're all in the backyard, you know, sitting there imagining all these different sequences. This is like a love letter to us and our imaginations growing up as a kid. So for me, that's the reason why I enjoyed the film because I had the ability just to let go of anything in the realm of reality of being possible in this film. I mean, I don't want to really spoil anything about this movie. There's just a lot of stuff in here that is, holy shit, this stuff is damn impossible to even happen. But again, then again, a nod back to our childhood. It was great seeing all the characters being brought back in some type of a facet in the movie. Um, Sean's character from Tokyo Drift, which, funny, is a movie I actually did enjoy. I kind of don't like how they made him like the comic relief. You know, to me, it seemed like he was more like comic relief than anything. Um, Bow Wow, I couldn't even believe that was Bow Wow. I had to look back on my phone to see, damn, Bow Wow, you don't look like Bow Wow no more. John Cena added to the movie. Some people say it was like a killer and it's killed the franchise. I don't, I don't believe that. I think it adds a little bit more. I mean, it's no different than adding in The Rock and it's no different than putting in um, J or Jason Strahan. It's no different than any of that to me, in my opinion. Is this a movie that you should go check out? Again, if you can let go of all laws of physics in the realm of reality, yes, go ahead and check out this film because it is a good time. It is fun. And I mean, you know, it's just a it's just, it's just a popcorn movie. That's what it is, you know? So if the so if their if their point was just trying to make a good popcorn film for people to watch, mission accomplished. But if you're all stuck in the, the realms of the reality and stuff, uh, this movie will not be for you because you'll be sitting there like this the whole damn time. Action sequences were crazy. They were ridiculous. Loved every moment of it, even though, I mean, again, when you got a car being slingshotted across the, over the mountainside by some cable and stuff, you're kind of like, eh. But still, I thought it was still just a great movie altogether. Um, what's your guys' thoughts and opinions on the film? I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. Go ahead and like, go ahead and comment, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Um, we will be doing a spoiler review once it actually drops here in this country. It's like one amazing thing to me. It's like all the, I mean, excluding the car crashes and people flipping cars and swinging cars all over the place and, and high level magnetism and everything. It's crazy. These guys are like my age, jumping and skipping her all around. I mean, at least make it real to the point where you jump somewhere, I'm going to have a little limp at the damn end. Because I would have been limping first damn jump. Ah! 
These people are like their 40s, may even be like 50s. Just give me a damn limp. I think overall in this movie, I have to give it at least a, huh? I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. I thought the movie was great. You know, outside of just like some of the ridiculousness, again, just let that stuff go. I don't think it was that bad of a film and I actually enjoyed watching the entire thing. Is it really a spoiler saying they went to damn outer space? What's next, for, where else could they possibly even go after this? I mean, where? I mean, I know there's been some jokes and some rumors on the internet about dinosaurs because it's the same property under, you know, Universal Umbrella, but damn, I mean, you can't really do that, or can you? They just went to space. And Han's back. Yeah, miss him, but... Is that really realistic how they brought him back? He's been doing all this stuff that's been going on all these years and nobody knows about it. But see, that's the thing I've learned about movies in general. If they want to bring a character back, they're gonna bring him back regardless, even if the explanation doesn't really make that much sense. But, you know, that's movie magic. These are the Fast and Furious people. There ain't no telling what these guys can do. They can do every damn thing. They jump all over the place, they don't limp at the end, they crash their cars and flip them, they fly all over the damn place. Now they go to outer space. I mean, where else can you go with the Fast and Furious franchise? Hill, and this is Troy Hill Talks.